Hi everyone, this is Renee Romeo of ReneeRomeo.com. Today's project is learning how to sew a bed skirt for a poster bed. Now I imagine most of you out there don't have bed skirts on your poster beds because the infrastructure of the bed doesn't allow you to hang a traditional bed skirt on top of your box spring and let it hang all the way to the floor. Now this is also called a dust ruffle or a bed valance and you know what? It's not preventing dust from going under if it's hanging above the floor. So what I'm proposing today is making a dust ruffle in three separate sections. We're going to attach it to the bed frame itself. And you know what? We're only going to be using either a glue gun or a simple staple gun to attach it. Well, this is what it looks like when you remove your mattress and box spring from your poster bed. You can exactly see why you can't run a traditional bed skirt across your box spring and run it to the floor because the slats are in the way. So if you have slats like this too, this is exactly why you don't have a bed skirt on your bed. But you know what? If you store items underneath your bed or you don't want people to see cats or support beams in the middle of your bed, this is the solution that you need. So you're just going to take a tape measure. You're going to run it underneath the slat all the way down to the floor. So my measurement turns out to be 11 and that's getting me directly to the carpeting. Uh, what you're going to do at that point is you're going to transfer that measurement over to your fabric, whatever fabric you like. And I'm going for a ruffled dust ruffle. Uh, it's going to be really romantic looking and really sumptuous and full. So I've taken all the measurements for the finished bed skirt and I have three measurements to share with you. Now your measurements might be a little different than mine depending on what the setup is on your bed. So mine turned out to be 11 inches high and this is a finished measurement. It also has 80 and a half inches across the right hand side and left hand side of the bed and then across the front it's 69 and a quarter. So these finished measurements are I'm going to go ahead and take it to the fabric and show you exactly how I cut out the fabric to make sure that it's going to be those exact exact measurements. Well, the fabric that I'm using today is 100% silk. It's absolutely gorgeous, has a beautiful sheen to it. And this is really something that is very luxurious looking, but it's not going to be luxurious looking unless you construct it properly. So silk or even polyester fabrics that are really thin need to have an interlining behind it. If they don't, they tend to kind of fall and they don't really fill out beautifully, nice and sumptuous like you'd like it. The secret to doing this is using a fabric called interlining. Now interlining is really nothing more than plain flannel. And the flannel that I have today is in a natural color. It's not too thick, um, but what it's going to do is it's going to add body to the silk or polyester fabric that you're using. This fabric is going to lay over the top of it. And what it's going to do when you ruffle it, it's going to hold all of these beautiful ruffles in place. You'll be able to manipulate this a lot nicer and not only will it hold its shape but it'll hold each and every curve so this is going to be beautiful when it's hanging underneath the bed. So I also have two inch wide twill tape. The thing I really love about this is that it's pre-finished on both sides so I don't have to worry about it unraveling. And this is what's going to be sewn directly to the dust ruffle and this is the thing that's going to attach to the bed frame. Well, I know your biggest question is going to be how much fabric do you need to complete this project? I have four yards of silk here. I purchased the end of a bolt, so that's all I have to work with. And you know what? It's going to give me plenty of fullness to make this look nice and beautiful and sumptuous. So we're just going to work with what we have. So here's a mock-up of the entire four yards of silk that I have. Now it's 55 inches wide, four yards long. And with those measurements, I know that I can get 11 panels out of this four yards. Now how do I know that? Well I know I need 11 inches finished for the entire dust ruffle top to bottom and then I know it needs to get attached to the twill tape at the top. I need a half inch extra for that and it also needs a hem. So the hem is going to be a half inch hem but I need an extra inch to do that because I need to fold it over. So that means that each and every one of these panels is going to be 12 and a half inches in length to get to my 11 inches finished. So that's what the this represents and that's exactly what you'll cut to if you're doing the exact same project. So the first thing you need to do for this project is make sure that your fabric is nice and square along the cut edge. Now I use a drywall T-square to do this. It's really great because I can line this edge of the T-square up with the salvage edge and make sure that everything is properly aligned. Now once I do that I can go ahead and I can take a pencil and I can make a nice line right along that cut edge to make sure that this 
this is going to be nice and square all the way through the project. Then I'll take a nice sharp pair of scissors and cut off the excess. Then I'll go ahead and I'll measure down 12 and a half inches, make a mark. And here's the tip just to get a reality check here. So now that you have your T-square set up, you can get a regular ruler and make sure that you've got your 12 and a half inches on this end. And mine's perfect. I've also done a small mock-up of the inner lining fabric and even though the inner lining fabric is 58 inches wide, which is a little wider than the silk, I'm still using 11 panels. I'm just omitting this very last area here at the bottom. But I'm also going to use these panels at 14 inches versus the 12 and a half, which is what the silk is cut at. And the reason why is so I can get a little wider hem at the bottom. It's going to flounce the areas of the ruffles out a little bit better and it's going to make the dust ruffle look really really nice and full. So this is going to be four and a third yards in total compared to the four yards for the silk. So I've squared off the starting edge on the interlining fabric and I'm using my T-square again at the 14 inch mark and I'm just going to go ahead and cut this nice and even each and every time. So if you remember, we're putting together three separate pieces to go along the perimeter of the bed. It's going to wind up looking like one continuous dust ruffle. But what we need to do is make sure that all three pieces are the exact same fullness. Uh, all you're going to do is take some measurements off of your own bed and plug them into this equation. So it's really just the width of the finished ruffle. So in my case, it's the top of the bed to the bottom of the bed, which gives us this 80 and a half inch length. This length is going to be plugged into the equation and we're going to multiply that by the fullness that we want in that fabric. So fullness really is just the amount of extra fabric that we need in order to create a pretty ruffle. So in my case it's two and a half times the width of the existing measurement and that's all I'm going to plug in there. So 80 and a half times two and a half gives us this number. Now once you get that number, whatever number it is, you're going to divide it by the width of your fabric panel when it's finished. So if you have, for instance, 55 inch wide fabric, you're going to be subtracting a half inch on either side for seams. So once you do that, that measurement becomes 54. Now in that case, if I divide it by 54, I'm coming up with 3.89. And when I do the same calculation for the 69 and a quarter measurement, you'll see here that it turns out to be 3.20. So let's get stitching. I have right sides together on my silk. I'm putting it underneath my presser foot so that I get a half inch seam. And what all I'm going to be doing here is making sure that I have the appropriate needle for the fabric. So this happens to be a number 70 needle. It's a really fine needle. And all I'm going to do here is simply go ahead and stitch. And then I'm going to back up and keep going. And when I get to the end, I'm going to do the exact same thing, back up. That's going to make a nice secure stitch on the ends. Once your seams are stitched in place, you're going to take a nice warm iron and iron them flat. So now I'm going to be folding over and pressing the bottom hem. So I've got a half inch folded over here and then I can go ahead and I can fold it over one more time to make sure that it's going to line up properly. You can see here it's lining up really well along all those stripes and press that into place. And I'll add pins to make sure that it's going to stay in place as I stitch. So I'm ready to stitch this in place. I still have a number 70 needle in here and I'm just lining up this raw edge here right inside the presser foot and I'm just going to catch it right along the edge and that's what the finished hem looks like. Now I'm moving on to hemming the interlining and I'd like the interlining to sit a half inch above the finished hem of the face fabric. So what I'm doing here is I have this one measured out at 11 and a half inches long. This one is going to be measured at 11 inches long, which is going to give me a nice thick hem at the bottom. So I've got my 11 inches. I've actually pressed this over. And so what I'm going to do at this point is just take the raw edge and move it up to that line, the pressed line, and press that into place. And now I'll have a nice inch and a quarter hem at the bottom. It's going to make it nice and flouncy and it's going to look perfect. And since flannel is a thicker fabric than silk, I've changed out the needle to a number 90 needle and changed out the color of my thread. Now that the inner lining is hemmed on all three sides, I'm going to put these two pieces of fabric together and you'll notice I'm putting wrong sides together. The reason why is because I like the inside fabric finished 
and the outside facing fabric finished. So I'm going to line these up uh, a little bit in from the finished edge on the silk and I'll go ahead and pin these together all along the top edge. And so when I do this, I'm going to run this top edge through the machine and do a basting stitch, a long basting stitch, just to keep it nice and secure together uh, so that I can make it a little easier for the next step. I've gone ahead and labeled each side a left, a right, and a bottom piece. And I'm also at the point where I could add a lining fabric to this. Now, in order to add a lining fabric to this, you're going to follow the exact same rules as the interlining. You're going to make sure that it's going to be a half inch shorter than the face fabric. And you can use the fabric as a muslin, you can use a drapery fabric, you could even use a blockout fabric if you'd like. A little thicker to deal with, a little harder to work with, but if you need the color of your bed, skirt to be true, then you're going to make sure that you're not going to have any light seepage through there. But I like light seepage with mine, so I'm leaving mine as just the face fabric and the interlining. So I just pulled the bed skirt fabric off the machine and I just wanted to show you my two lines of stitching. The first one at the top is a quarter inch from the very top. This is the basting stitch, basting the two fabrics together. And then about an eighth of an inch down from that, I have another basting stitch set on the very longest length that my machine will let me do. Now this is the stitch that's going to allow us to ruffle this fabric. And I'll show you exactly how it's done. It's all done by hand. So the very first thing I'm doing here is measuring out my twill tape. Now, I have that 80 and a half inch measurement on my left and right sides. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm adding two inches to each one of those measurements. So this is 82 and a half that I'm cutting it at. Now what that extra two inches is going to do, it's going to allow me to wrap the actual bed skirt around inside the bed frame and it's going to allow me to fold it over and make a nice finished edge so that everything doesn't unravel. So now I'm going to take the twill tape and I'm going to mark sections on here. I want eight separate sections, so I'm putting a pin in the halfway mark. I'll take it, fold it over again, put a pin in that halfway mark, and then again in that halfway mark. I want eight sections. I'm gonna do the same thing with the bed skirt so I know exactly how much to ruffle in between each and every pin. Now that I have eight equal sections marked off on the twill tape and the face fabric, I'm finding the very middle of both pieces and I'm going to join those two pieces together. I'm going to make sure that the basting is actually going to hit exactly on that twill tape, which it will. So I'm gonna take a nice long pin and I'm going to weave it in and out of this fabric. Now as you're ruffling, the fabric tends to move around, so the longer the pin, the better. Now when you're ruffling, you're going to start off at one end. So you're going to choose either the top thread or the bottom thread to pull. And so in my case, I'm just going to choose the top. It doesn't make any difference either way. So you're just going to go ahead and this is a very gentle process. None of this is jerky. None of this is going to be very, very strong. You're just going to be moving this ever so lightly all the way down the entire length of that thread. And really, as you go, you can kind of get some tension on it with your hand, rolling it around your fingers, and just keep moving this ever so gently. Now it's gonna take a little bit of time to get all the way to the center of that fabric. Now I'm at the point here where I've reached my first pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this in place right at the spot where the two pins meet up. And then I'm going to make sure that this ruffling gets nice and evened out in between there. So that's like that. And then the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to pull on the interlining underneath it and then pull on the actual face fabric to make sure that that ruffled area is going to lay nice and flat. And then at this point, I could go ahead and start pinning directly to the twill tape. And each section is going to look like this when it's all pinned in place. So that entire process took a half an hour. So we'll take it over to the machine and make sure this is nicely stitched in place. So once it's all stitched down, you see, this is what you wind up with. With silk especially, it really unravels very easily. So if you were thinking that you could get away with not putting in that first basting stitch when I basted the two layers of fabric together, uh, don't do that and eliminate it. You really need it because uh, you could see here, the fabric is intact all beneath that basting line and it's unraveling above it. Uh, we're not gonna worry about this right now because we're gonna tuck it all in inside of this twill tape and we're just going to go ahead 
and flip this over to make a nice finished edge along the side here. So that's what it looks like when it's all finished from the front. And this is what it looks like on the back. Nice and finished. Everything looks really professional, both front and back. The bed skirt is all laid out. The finished fabric is facing toward the room and the interlining is going to be facing toward the inside of the bed. Now for this project, I'm using a staple gun. Mine is electric. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start at the foot of the bed, put a staple in. And then I'm going to move to the head of the bed and I'm going to put a staple there. Now I'll put a staple around the center and then work my way in either direction. Now that one side is done, I'd like to show you how to dress these. So they're not going to hang exactly perfectly for you right off the bat. You're going to have to do a little bit of work here. So in order to get these to lay nice and straight, what you want to do is you want to take your hands kind of like this and make sure that you're pushing in on the interlining and then you're kind of cupping it on the outside with the silk. It's going to lay so much nicer and it's going to make sure that every single ruffle has a beautiful curve to it. So the footboard is a little different. I don't have that nice little rail to staple to. Uh, what I'm going to do here is just line up the bottom of the twill with the bottom of the footboard. And you can kind of see here I've got some residue from the hot glue that I had there before. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to curve it around the edge a little bit so that way it kind of hugs that corner. Now that everything's lined up, I can just go right ahead and staple it into place. Now that all the ruffles are beautifully dressed, I'm going to put everything back together and show you how beautiful it all looks. Just look at the level of perfection that we've achieved as a result of making this bed skirt in three separate pieces. It hugs the bed frame perfectly. It's made out of quality fabric, which is something that you normally don't get at the store. And we're able to look at the side panels of wood because we don't have a bed skirt that was purchased at the store covering it up. It reaches all the way to the floor, so it's going to hide anything that's underneath your bed. And it's also going to make sure that it's a true dust ruffle. So dust isn't going to accumulate underneath there. And it also deadens noise in your room. So you're going to get a better night's sleep just by making a custom dust ruffle. So this is Renee Romeo of ReneeRomeo.com. Thank you so much for watching this project. And if you're interested in more sewing projects like this, check out my sewing playlist on ReneeRomeo.com. And I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching watching.